About a thousand years ago, Chinese landscape painter Guo Xi posed the question: "In what does a gentleman's love of landscape consist?" To answer this question, the Met gathered more than 120 Chinese landscape paintings in three rotations and put up an exhibition titled "Streams and Mountains Without End," offering audiences insight into the tradition of Chinese landscape paintings. So each of our galleries is kind of a distinct space in its own right, and so what I tried to do was to create a little mini. Theme, a mini exhibition in each room. So, beginning in the first gallery, it's called the Majestic Landscape, and this introduces the idea of the long landscape hand scroll. Following that, you move into the landscape of poetry.、Um, these are landscapes that have, have some kind of relationship with the Chinese poetic tradition. In the third gallery, I brought out、uh, the Magical Landscape. These are landscapes that give、uh, viewers a sense of sort of the magical qualities of、um, landscapes inflected with Buddhist traditions or Taoist traditions. Now, moving into the fourth gallery, our visitors will see the landscape of reclusion. This is the idea that, in times of turmoil, Chinese scholars would often remove themselves from society and go off into the mountains or into their retirement villa. After that, there's sort of a surprising room. I hope、uh, it's called the landscape of abstraction. These are three artworks by contemporary painters, all born in China, who are painting abstract works of art that are somehow based on the theoretical or visual traditions of Chinese landscape painting. The sixth room is the landscape of art history. These are all landscapes, and this is a very familiar concept in Chinese art history of a landscape made in response to some old master. The seventh gallery is the, the landscape of the garden. The idea that a garden is a landscape in its own right, which is very important to Chinese garden culture. The gallery we're standing in here. This is the eighth gallery. This is called the Fantastic Landscape,、uh, particularly focusing on three 17th-century painters who created fantastic forms out of their own minds, rather than sort of painting what they saw in nature. And then finally, the last gallery is called the Riverscape. These are landscapes that really foreground the important role of rivers in、um, Chinese landscape. One of my major goals in this exhibition was to take this tradition that we call landscape shan shui, and、uh, sort of pick it apart into different pieces so that people can read it and understand all these different distinctions. And so,、uh, I think sometimes we walk through Chinese painting galleries, we see lots of mountains and rivers and trees, and we say, "Oh, this is landscape shan shui," and it all kind of melts together. So, one of my goals and what I'm hoping people will take away from the、um, the text panels that are in the room and the explanations is that there are all these different types. So. That's my goal: is that each of these themes will allow people to kind of、um, find what it is in these landscapes that makes each of them distinct.